Dzień dobry, or good day, and welcome back to LMM. Today, I'm here in Poland, taking a look at some of the country's abandoned locomotives. And so we're going to start off here at Lezno. Behind me, this depot was operational until recent times. In fact, this was a depot that undertook the maintenance of the modern stock and diesels, and also maintenance and overhaul of steam engines. In fact, you can see scattered around me here are several parts of one of the locomotives that was taken apart and never went back together. Around me here, these are the mortal remains of OL49111. And this was one of the things that came here, was taken apart and bit just disappeared. So around me now, you can see we've got the pistons, the valves, a set of driving wheels, the frames, the firebox, which was condemned. And beyond us over there, there is the tender and the cab. So we're gonna have a, a little wander around this closed depot and look at some of the other locomotives that are stored here. Scattered below my feet, you can see the crosshead, the pistons, coupling rods, even the valves themselves, and scattered haphazardly at the base of an upside down firebox are more of the coupling rods. And as you can see, even the foundation ring is here. Everything was stripped down to be renewed and replaced. And on top of the frames here, even the cylinders are here. Both cylinder blocks just sat outside a closed depot, awaiting their fate. And below it are the frames. This is 111's mortal remains. Very sad, an engine that will most likely never go back together again. It really is such a sad, unceremonious end to a once proud engine. One that sadly I never actually got to see working. Even part of the brake rigging is still visible here. This is just a dumping ground for some of the parts. Most of it's been here sometime, as you can see by the tree that's growing out of inside it. And this is what remains of 111's cab. Still basically structurally sound and, uh, well, rusty and falling apart. Taken off the locomotive tub, its overhaul and just dumped here. Over there, we can see the set of tires that were taken off the wheels. And next door, we have two grounded tender bodies over here as well, with the bogies being over by the chassis. It's just, it's really sad when we walk around a yard in the UK, you see these things go, oh yes, that's going back together again. Whereas this is, this is dead. So this is a site that we don't very often get to see in the UK, eh? actually abandoned, rotting away steam locomotives. This is OL49, I'm not sure. It's got number 69 on it, but that's not what it is because 69 is actually out running a service today as a working locomotive. As you can see, it's already started to be cannibalized. Things are missing, the buffer has gone. The connecting rods, everything have been taken off to go on to keeping the surviving members of the class working. It is looking, a little bit sad and the closer you look the more and more you can see that things have been taken off this you also get a sense of scale of how much bigger the loading gauge is out here in poland how much taller they are than the things we have in the uk obviously if you're watching this from the continent this is about normal to you and if you're looking from america this is small but here in poland the moss grows well on a once proud locomotive once so important to keeping poland moving and here it sits completely forgotten. There is no preservation for this. Equally, it is under no immediate threat of scrapping. It just sits here forgotten. And as an enthusiast, this is utterly, utterly heartbreaking. In terms of scale, it's so different to what I'm used to. The running board is up here above my head. The driving wheels, while smaller than me, are still a long way from the boiler, allowing all this space here to get in between. It also helps to emphasize more of what's been stolen. The fact that the air tanks that were here are no longer, the sanders aren't connected. Everything around here is just missing little bits and bobs. Uh, clambering up into the cab of OL49, a missing number. You'll see that absolutely everything of use and a merit has been taken off it, including a fair amount of the floor. We have some of the connecting rods here which have been stored conveniently in the firebox so we don't lose them. Even one of the fire hole doors is missing. All of the injector and its associated moving parts, they're gone. And another one of the rods is on the side. The lubricator appears to still be there, but a lot of the pipework is missing or has just been cut off. Like the valve there was just gas axed away and obviously there is no tender behind me which is very strange so 
all very sad and everything over here, the reverser, the screw itself, the linkage is still there, but everything else is gone. The brake, loco brake's still there, but the train brake's gone. The gauge frames, everything has been removed from this. It's all very, very sad. And in fact, I think I can still see ash in there and that just remains of the last fire, or at least some components. That's very sad to see it just in this state. How it would have been. One of the other things that's been dumped around here that really captures my attention is one of the old yard shunters. This is an SM03, a little diesel mechanical drive. And I've always quite fancied one of them because I think they're super cute with the running board down here. And just the whole shape of it is a very cute little locomotive. Again, this one's been robbed of bits, the rods are missing from the jack shaft, and I suspect that as everything has been welded up here, it was an attempt to stop people stealing bits from the engine. And they're really sweet little diesels, but again, it's just sat here rotting. And the big thing to point out from everything you see in this video is still owned by PKP, Polish State Railways. There's no heritage really associated with this stuff. This is just national railway stock sat, surplus to requirements awaiting its fate. And so having explored a little bit further, we've come across these, which are presumably the driving wheels off 111, because as you see, they've all had the tires taken off, which correspond with the tires over there, which means I don't know what the extra driving set of wheels over there was, because I rather suspect this was all bits of 111, but a set of driving wheels, tireless, just sat, nothing over the bearings, nothing over any of it. It's just, it's effectively just scrap at this point, and it's very sad. But there is more stuff over there, so we're going to have a further gander down this way. Despite all appearances, this is actually a relatively rare survivor here in Poland. This is a TY3, the shorter and smaller boiler version of the much more common TY2 or Kreislok locomotive. There's quite a few of these preserved elsewhere, but in Poland there are only, I think, two or three of this particular type of locomotive left. Which is sad for it to be sat here unceremoniously just falling apart. This one was also at some point based at Poznan and also Vostin, as you can see on the side. Which is interesting because when we finish walking around here, that's where we're going next. It's just sad, isn't it? And again, you can see all the fittings that were once on it that have been removed. And it's just sat here. And there's obviously the next thing to do is go and have a look inside the cab. Uh, here we go. Oh. Oh, I've even got the seats. Oh. Oh. Well, the seat's still there. The seat's kind of there with Tisky. Again, everything in here that could have been taken off has been removed, apart from a couple of gauges, which is nice to know. They're still there. Uh, the steam brake is still there. The reverser is actually still in situ. Just... There we go. What's left of the seat? The uh, part of the brake system, the reverser. The rocking grate's still in there. The floor creaks alarmingly. Oh God. And again, the injector has been robbed of all the parts. An amazing bodge there. And uh, no, the pressure gauge is still up on this one, and a couple of the, couple of the bits of the manifold itself. But um, yeah, mostly gone. And one last look outside of the cab to imagine how it would have been. This ST43 is also just abandoned here. Now I don't know if this is not running, but I assume on its condition that it's not going to run again because there's rust building up everywhere on it. But when I first came to Poland, these were the things that were still kind of in everyday service. seen them about um, and now it's just that's it i pause for a moment for the unusual sight of three generations three different types of propulsion of railway locomotives side by side 
This is all that remains of the boiler of 111. So that's the OL's boiler, I think. You can see the outer firebox there, missing the inner, which is over at the start. Put on this little wagon here, a smoke box tacked on the end. And if we come round, that's oh, still got the smoke box door on it. That's interesting. Okay, but if we stick our, stick the camera inside, you can see that all the tubes have been removed, the dome's been removed. It is just a shell of a boiler. There is absolutely nothing left in here at all. And then over here, we have a TY42. So this is the standard version, otherwise the TY2 or TY42, if it was built after the war here in Poland. Um, we're gonna have to go around the other side, look at this one. And here we have the remainder of the dump steam engines. It's the TY2 or 42, uh, an OL and an OL. This one is another one of the Kreislocks, the German designed war engines. It has definitely seen better days and things like the cladding have now started to rot through and most of it's missing. This one still has its coupling rods on the side. The con rods are long gone. The um, crosshead is still in place there with the piston still in there. That hasn't been removed yet, probably because, well, there aren't any of these working at the moment. Things like the air tank are also still in place and we have the length of the reverser still coming down. Little bits are missing, obviously, and small parts, but it's still got the washout plugs in here, which several other things have had missing. And there's various fittings along the side, which are now AWOL. Being of the wrong generation to have ever visited the infamous Barry, this is the closest I'll ever get to a proper locomotive scrapyard. And this is the confirmation it is indeed a TY2. This is TY2 number 1086, which then brings us behind us. Well, I wonder if I can get in this one as well and see what's left up in the cab of this one. I can. I can't. Looking in here though, well, there's not a lot left, is there? Everything's gone off the back head, the regulator, in fact, everything's missing off the manifold as well. The reverse wheel is still there, but the loco and train brakes are missing. Everything's gone, and you, oh, actually, the roof's fallen as well. This, this is a sorry state. Well, I think we've learned where that driving set came from. It's been lifted out of this. This is OL49 number 60. And presumably the driving set that is over there isn't the one that came out of this as that was taken out and put onto one of the surviving fleet to keep them running. And rather they've just not put it back in. So this is now a 242 and it looks very strange for it. Again, you can see that it's been out here for quite some time. There's a major discoloration on the cylinders and on the boiler barrel. And once again, it's been used as a rather hefty source of spare parts. The air tanks are still in situ on this and so are the oil lines, but the crosshead is there, but the, <laughs> the big end is missing, as is the little end, as is the connecting rod itself, as are the coupling rods. Various other bits around here are missing, but as things go, it's actually relatively complete. It's still also got the PKP crest on the side but it does look very sad and very tired. I'm fairly convinced that anything that's left on this is now the leftover bad parts that were taken off something just put back on this for holding. It does look remarkably sad, although it does have the washout plug still in it. They haven't been taken and the injector is still available on the outside of the engine there. It's just really sad seeing things like this that aren't in a museum that have no plan, no future. The, the future for these is very much unknown. It's a very, Strange. Very sad. To me, as a English enthusiast, I'm used to seeing things like this, you know, in a museum or at least being looked after. So to come here and see stuff like this is just amazing and, you know, fairly distressing. Oh, well, there's the Kriegs tender. That's for either the TY2 or the TY3, traditional cruise lock tender. And that's OL49 number 99, but first let's have a clamber up and see what's in this cab. So the OL's tenders, it appears, oh, here we go, have been taken off their bogies. Maybe the bogies have been reused. So we've got greenery growing through here, a cab that is entirely stripped. There is nothing in here, one valve, all the valves out of the manifold gone, everything across here to spit, even the regulator handle's gone. And I think to a degree, yep, inside the firebox, everything's gone there. Uh, a couple of the dampers are still there, but reverser handle still there. Steam brake handle gone, train brake handle gone. Yeah, this is this is a fairly oh, floor gone. 
This is a fairly sad on. Everything this side is missing. It is really, really heartbreaking seeing something like this and knowing... I don't know what's going to happen to it. I don't know even next time I come here if it will still be here. And obviously being out in the open with the roof open, it's just getting worse. As I said, so much of this we don't know what the future holds. But for engines like this particular OL, we can be pretty sure that it is a no-hoper that will never run again. The last of the engines that I know of that are stored here is this one. This is OL4999, which again, is sat here in very sad looking condition with the paint flaking off the side of it. It's just, again, cannibalized for parts. There's cladding missing off the side of the firebox. The connecting rods is missing again and various bits of the trim have been pulled off, uh, including bits on the side where the exhaust comes out of the cylinder up to the chimney. It's just all a bit, it's sad. It's really sad. I mean, it's also a real amazing experience to be able to see actual legitimately abandoned steam engines in the 21st century. Uh, but it's also heartbreaking. A poor thing. I really like OLs and they're nice looking machines as well. So I would look in the cab of this, but the steps have been taken for something else. Although actually that said, if I go, There we go. Regular, oh, there's even a gauge glass still up here. The regulator still, handle's still there. Most of the manifold's been removed, at least the taps up. Some of the valves are still there. Gauge glass is still there. Brake's still there. Oh, little fold down seat's still here. Again, the inject, and the injectors seem to be the thing that gets stolen the most. And obviously the back head cladding's all missing and all the wash up plugs across here have gone as well. Oh, and obviously, cold space back here. Right. I am simply just not used to seeing a steam engine in this state with the patina, the paint peeling. It's so alien to me. And as we'd come to the end of the line, it was now time to leave because we had a train to catch and it was bittersweet. I was glad that I'd got to see these machines but it was absolutely gut-wrenching knowing that the next time that I get out to Poland, these might not even be there. It's so alien to think that these are still on the National Network stock book and that they're just here, left, abandoned, uncared for. It's so completely different to everything that I've learnt and everything I feel in heritage as a preservationist. There's another... Some 43 there, and as we wander down here, an old tanker that's not seen the light of day, well, seen anything for a while. One of these so-called retro coaches missing all of its windows. And as we wander further along here, more of the SM42 diesels just sat awaiting whatever fate equally just needs a bit of love. And there's in fact more of them as we wander along here. Also built it Fablock, same as the OLs. Next door to the more contemporary stuff. And this is just the, the dead siding. Missing running numbers, so obviously not going to do anything again. Fablock, holes appearing, all boarded up to stop people breaking in. Paint missing. In fact, it still looks like it's got part of the engine. Another one. Six twenty. Oh, I think there's steam in. There's more steam up here ahead. Oh, missed that, didn't we? And walking back, so we need to catch the the next train out. Oh, there's quite a few things here. It's unfortunate to miss. So another oh well. Hard to. This is number eighty-one complete with its tender and greenery growing out. The top of it is rotted out. Missing, oh, also missing a set of driving wheels. So that set at the front could be it as well. Missing all of the stuff at the front. Another Kreeslox tender. So that's for the other one. And then I don't know why there's a third one here. And another OL's tender. And finally, on the end up here, Going to have the steps. 
another OL49. Oh, it's seven, I think. Oh, I think that's number seven. I've, I've been on this. I fired this. This, when I first came out to Vostin in 2010-2011, this was a working locomotive, see, based at Vostin. This is the last time I saw number seven work when it was still a complete ticketed working locomotive. In fact, the day before I'd spent helping out on the footplate and even firing it as it did the shunting ready for the grand parade, of which this is it taking part in what was one of its last ever duties. It was withdrawn shortly after. Oh, that's very sad. I, I, I've crewed that. that. That's died in my lifetime. I would have loved to have spent more time with number seven lamenting of our shared memories, but we had a train to catch. And if you were going to travel between Lesno and Vostin, there was only one correct way to do it, and that was with Europe's last regular timetabled steam service. Something which sadly now looks like it has come to its end. That last bastion of real working steam that flickering flame now looks to be extinguished. And as we boarded the footplate of the locomotive for our journey to Vostin for part two of looking at abandoned locomotives in Poland, in the knowledge that this is no longer possible, I'm left with memories of days just like this, of being able to be on the footplate of the last regular steam hauled service in Europe. And I'll be honest with you guys, to think that this has now come to an end it makes me cry. It makes me absolutely sob. I've been so lucky to be able to experience proper steam on a proper service, something that my generation should never have been able to do. So for that, thank you, Howard. Adios.